Good afternoon, my name is Steve McKinney and I'm with the Indiana Department of Local Government Finance and we're here this afternoon to learn about enterprise zone deductions here in LaPorte County. And so an overview of today's course is that we're going to review the Indiana Code on enterprise zone deductions. We're going to get into the calculation of the deduction, the review process by the county auditor, and the taxpayer's right to appeal any changes made by the auditor. Uh, there's also a, a waiver that's available to correct certain types of problems. We'll re review the form EZ2 and we'll get into frequently asked questions. The Indiana Code establishes the deduction and how it's to be claimed and reviewed. The statutes all ad also address the appeals process and measures to correct certain types of problems. So let's, let's take a look at some of those statutes. The various statutes are listed on this slide. They include 45-2, which defines the base year assessed value. We look at section 7 for the qualified investment, section 9 for the deduction, section 10 grants the taxpayer the right to ask for an extension to file that return, section 11 gets into the eligibility and the appeals process, and section 12 gets into the deduction limitation which is basically this is a 10 year period that you can claim the enterprise zone deduction. Section 2 defines the base year assessed value as the total assessed value of real property and personal property assessed at an enterprise zone location on an assessment date in the calendar year immediately preceding the calendar year in which the taxpayer makes a qualified investment. A qualified investment includes the purchase of a building, a purchase of new manufacturing or production equipment, the cost associated with a uh, repair, rehabilitation, or modernization of an existing building, on-site infrastructure improvements, the construction of a new building, and the cost associated with retooling existing machinery. The calculation for the deduction is from Indiana Code 6-1.1-45-9, and it basically says that the deduction is the amount that equals the remainder of, one, the total amount of the assessed value of the taxpayer's enterprise zone property um, on a particular assessment date minus number two the total amount of the base year of the assessed value at that location so the calculation is very basic it's what's the total assessed value for one year minus what's the assessed value for the preceding year and the difference between those two numbers is the deduction the review process by the county auditor, the county auditor has a statutory authority to determine the eligibility of each applicant and the auditor must notify the applicant by August the 15th of that assessment year of his or her determination. If the applicant is in disagreement with the county auditor's determination, a complaint must be filed within 45 days of the notification in the office of the clerk of the circuit or superior court. Now for correcting certain types of problems. Um, the, the association made by resolution waive failure to file a timely return or a complete deduction application, a timely deduction application or a complete one. Um, so quite often people forget to file the return, it's late and they're going to lose the deduction and this is the safety net that's built into the Indiana Codes that helps those folks get the deduction that they feel that they are entitled to. The process is that the um, association uh, has, puts a legal advertisement in the paper, holds a public hearing, and then they can adopt the, the, waiver, of re the waiver of resolution um, granting forgiveness for that failure to file a timely or complete return. The timetable for review, the deduction application, the form EZ2, must be filed with the county auditor between March the 1st and May the 15th in the year that they are requesting the deduction. The county auditor must notify the applicant of the determination by August the 15th of that same year. And then once again, if the applicant is in disagreement with the county auditor's determination, they need to file that complaint within 45 days with the clerk of the circuit or superior court. 
filing the form EZ2. If the personal property form includes an enterprise zone deduction claim, in other words, if, if, their, if their EZ2 is for personal property, a copy of that personal property tax return needs to be attached to that EZ2. It's important to understand that the form, the form EZ2 and the personal property tax return are both confidential pursuant to Indiana code. Uh, the Form EZ-2 is required to be filed each year a deduction is claimed even if no new equipment is acquired. So each year that an applicant wants the deduction, they need to file the EZ-2 claiming it in the first year or in the second year or in the third year. So, and right on down the line for the full 10-year period. Frequently asked questions. Does the deduction change after it is determined in the first year? And the answer is that Indiana Code states that the deduction is the remainder of the assessed value in that first year minus the base year value of the preceding year. So the deduction would never change once it's established. The only time that the deduction would change is if the qualifying asset was removed. So if they had this personal property, this manufacturing equipment, for example, and it was there for three years, and then they decided to get rid of it for whatever reason, if the equipment's no longer there, there would be nothing to apply the deduction to. So would they then not file an EZ-2? That's correct. Okay. Um, if, if, there is no, if there is no deduction to claim, there would be no need for the form to be filed. So the, the intent of the, the EZ-2 is to claim a deduction. So if one year the auditor sees that they didn't file a uh, an application for a deduction in a particular year, the auditor would know simply not to process it and put it on the books. Another frequently asked question is what is the base year value? And right out of the Indiana Code, the base year value equals the total assessed value of real property and personal property assessed in an enterprise zone location on an assessment date in the calendar year immediately preceding the calendar year in which the taxpayer makes a qualified investment. What if the business disposes of the equipment or demolishes the building before the end of the 10-year period? And once again, that portion of the deduction claimed by the taxpayer would not be eligible. What are some reasons why the enterprise zone deduction may be partially or totally denied? And first, the application may not have been filed timely. And we spoke earlier about how a waiver can solve that problem, but the auditors are trained that the Indiana Code requires a timely application to be filed, and if that's not done, um, the auditor knows that the codes require for him or her to deny that deduction. And then the safety net can kick in where the taxpayer would then uh, go to the association and ask for that waiver process to be done. The next bullet point says that the business is not located within the established enterprise zone boundary. And every now and then we see a business, uh, we had one county a few years back where the businesses that were touching the boundary, they were on the outside of it but not on the inside of it, but they were touching the boundary and they were also asking for the deduction. And um, it was allowed for a few years under one county auditor and then a new county auditor came in and looked at the map and said, this doesn't seem to be complying with the statute. So um, the new county auditor corrected the situation by, by showing that the taxpayers that they were not within the boundary and therefore they did not qualify for it. So that would be a possible reason why somebody's deduction application would be denied. And the next bullet point says that another reason for it not to be denied is the qualifying investment has been removed from the area. Um, questions. Another question that's popped up over the last few years involves the new constitutional tax caps that Indiana has in place. A few years back, the citizens of Indiana voted in the 1%, 2%, 2% tax caps. And the question is, could that possibly have an impact on my enterprise zone deduction or my tax abatement deduction or any other type of deduction for that matter? And the answer is yes, tax caps could have an impact on it because it's two separate calculations on the tax bill. On one calculation, you've got the gross assessed value times the constitutional tax cap of 3% in, in this example, 
that equals X amount of dollars. On the other part of the calculation on the tax bill, what's the gross assessed value? What's the assessed value of any deductions they qualify for? That gives you a net assessed value times the tax rate gives you another dollar amount due. Your tax bill that will be due will be the lesser of those two amounts. So it's possible that the constitutional tax caps could eliminate or erase the benefits of a deduction. And that will just vary from situation to situation throughout the state based on whether you put in a brand new building or rehabbed an existing building and what are the tax rates and, and all those kind of things. But we have seen a few people throughout the state that have said, well, what's the point in asking for a deduction if I'm not going to get it? And my answer to them is, well, at the time you were asking for the deduction, you didn't know what the tax rates were, you didn't know how the budget process was working out, and so the treasurer makes that calculation on the constitutional tax caps at the very last second. And so it's, it's not known to the people when they're jumping through the hoops to get that deduction, whether it will ever um, pay off for them or not. And so some people argue that, well, the, the, the deduction should be applied after the tax caps kick in. And my answer to them on that is, well, you'll have to rewrite the Constitution because the state's Constitution isn't worded that way. So that's not an option for them. But I do see every now and then where somebody claims a deduction and then the constitutional tax caps save them even more money. So of course, why would they want to pay taxes getting the deduction if they can save even more money by letting the, the tax cap provisions kick in? But they should still file an easy two. They should still file an easy two because that's a part of the process where they're claiming the deduction, the assessed values are getting certified to the state, um, tax rates haven't been developed at that time, so nobody knows what the tax bill will be at the time they're asking for the deduction. Okay. It, no, knowing whether the tax cap provisions kick in or the actual deduction is going to be the lesser of the two, that won't be known until the very last second as the tax bills are being printed and things like that. So that's, that's a question I'm seeing a lot on deductions in general, um, enterprise zone deductions, tax abatement deductions, or other deductions. Those are a lot of the frequently asked questions that I've had with enterprise zone deductions over the years. Is there any, are there any questions here that someone else would have that, okay, yes? If a business buys another business here in town that's in the enterprise zone, yes. they just buy the assets, do those assets still qualify? Or is, they, is it a new, considered a new business, new starting period? Or? Um, the definition of qualifying equipment says the purchase of new manufacturing or production equipment. So used equipment would not qualify. And if you're buying the whole business and... If you buy the whole business, you're buying a building as well. Um, the, the, the slide in the program that defines qualified investments includes um, the purchase of a building. So it's possible you could purchase the building and you might qualify for some deductions on the purchase of the building. Now some people think that just the mere acquisition of a building, I should get a deduction on the entire amount. But the deduction calculation, as we discussed during this course, is what's last year's assessed value and what's this year's assessed value and what's the difference between the two. So there are many examples where the purchase of a building may come out to be the same dollar amount, which would have a, a zero effect on the difference. Or there are times where there would be a difference. For example, Let's say you bought an empty building and the assessor had placed an obsolescence factor on it and maybe drove the assessed value down 40% because the building had been empty and things like that. Somebody comes in, buys that building, and maybe one person just sweeps the floors, washes the windows, and turns on the light switch and they're up and running for business. And the assessor says, well, the business is being used, the building's being used now, so I'm gonna take off that obsolescence factor. So last year it was getting a 40% obsolescence factor. This year the assessment went up because it's being used. So that would be a good example of where last year's assessment and this year's assessment are different and they would qualify on the deduction on the difference between the two. Somebody else could buy a building and needs a new roof, central air conditioning, unit needs replaced. They're gonna replace the windows while they're at it and they invest a substantial amount of money 
the assessor looks at that building and says, well, they've made definite improvements to it between last year and this year, so I'm going to raise their assessment for that. And another example, maybe the taxpayer simply puts a new roof on it, and the assessor looks at that building and says, there wasn't enough repairs done to that building to raise the assessment, so even though the taxpayer spent $10,000 on a new roof, it really wasn't enough to justify raising the assessment on the building. So in that case, the assessment didn't right or increase from one year to the next, therefore there'd be no deduction to apply for. So there's all those different types of what ifs and what if that kind of stories out there uh, on what's going to happen with that business between one year and the next. Because the definition on how to calculate the deduction is just that basic. What was last year's assessed value? What's this year's assessed value? And what's the difference between those two numbers? And that's going to be your deduction for the next 10 years. <coughs> so every now and then we get somebody that says, well, I bought a retail business in, in here. And I, I want to get my cash register and my counters and my shelving um, to get this credit, this deduction. But the, the definition of qualified investments clearly says that it's for the purchase of new manufacturing and production equipment. So retail type things would not qualify for the deduction. And sometimes I get questions like that. So that was a great question. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? I'm sorry, Ms. Wilson, I was late. But, oh, okay. Uh, I just have a basic question. Uh, yes. The two big ones, well, there's three. Uh, Enterprise on investment deduction. If you were just renting the building, if you make improvements in the building, can you oh, still? That's a great question. Um, the question is if if you are renting a building and make improvements to the real estate inside the building, can you claim a deduction? And I would have to ask what type of improvements you're making because not all improvements you make to a building would be classified as real property. For example, somebody could put in a craneway system inside the building to lift the heavy coil of steel or whatever from point A to point B. The craneway system, even though it's bolted into the building, is still personal property. So that would be a personal property thing not accessible to the building. But let's say you've got this building, you're leasing it, you put in a new central, unit, a central air conditioning unit and a new roof. The building's not being assessed to you so you wouldn't be able to qualify for a deduction on something that's not even being assessed to you. If the owner of the building, if his assessment went up from one dollar amount to another dollar amount because of the money you put into it, he would be able to apply for the deduction. But you wouldn't be able to apply for a deduction on something that you're not even being assessed for. Right, okay? I, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. And then other employment credit, expense credit, the people I employ to get this have to both work in the zone and live in the zone. For the employment expense credit? Yeah. Yes. There's nobody like that, is there? Mm -hmm. so there are people oh, there. That we have numerous businesses that yeah. use the employment expense credit because I, that are located in the enterprise zone and they okay. have employees they have who to actually live there? Yes, who live in the enterprise zone, yes. There's very little housing in that area, but okay, okay. Uh, and the employee tax deduction, same thing, have yes. to live and, okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, I'm with the agency that handles the property tax deduction, so I wouldn't be able to handle those Department of Revenue type questions, so I'm happy you're here to okay. answer those. And so, great questions. Are there any others? I have one about okay. an easy two. Easy to. We didn't even look at that form, so we probably you should know, take a I look. You have it. You want, oh, I can call Can you it put up. it on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Sure. That'd be great idea. The way that you calculate the deduction is on the easy to form. And if you look at Schedule A, the function of Schedule A is to calculate that deduction in its first year. You're going to calculate the base year assessed value, which is the assessed value in the preceding year. You're going, to cal you're going to calculate that first year assessed value, which is the current year. And over in column six in schedule A, shows the amount of the deduction. It is the total, the total for the current year, less the total for the preceding year, and the difference is the, the deduction that you qualify for. You then carry the amount of that deduction down to schedule B year one. And let's say the deduction amount was $50,000. So 
So in assessment year, since we're looking at March 1st, 2013, that would be the assessment year. And then the amount of the deduction would be $50,000. Next year for March 1st, 2014, you would refile this form and just show another $50,000 there. And that's how simple it is to file this form each and every year as long as um, the investment that you claim the deduction on is still there at the property. If you got rid of that piece of manufacturing equipment and the deduction, and you no longer qualified for the deduction, you simply wouldn't file this form. But each year you want the deduction, you would just update it each year by going from year one, year two, year three, and on down the line, and add one year to the assessment year, and carry that $50,000 deduction, or whatever it calculated out to be, down one more line. And so, it's a pretty basic, pretty fundamental form to fill out. The, does, yes. does the assessor figure the deduction on the accumulative total deduction claim or on each year? Does the assessor calculate the deduction each year? You know, do you add up what's in the amount of deduction? the auditor is supposed to. Well, the, the, audit, the, okay. the, the taxpayer Personal fills out the form. Yeah. The assessor determines the assessed value of the real property. <clears throat> And so the taxpayer would fill out the form with information that's determined by the assessor if we're talking about real property. If we're talking about personal property, that's a self-assessment system. Mm -hmm. So the taxpayer would fill out their property tax returns and, mm -hmm. um, and have Same that information property, yeah. available to them. But the definition of base year value talks about the total assessed value of real property and personal property in that easy location. And so, yeah, it, they, the definition in the Indiana Code talks about the cumulative total for both of those categories. Now, every now and then I get a, not so a complaint. Then, okay, go their ahead. deduction is based on this number. Their deduction, oh, for the total claim. Right. The function, I see where your question is. Schedule B has your one, two, one through 10. Right. And down at the bottom it says total deduction claim it's possible that you could have layers of deductions. Right. One year I have an existing building which doesn't qualify for anything, but then the next year I put manufacturing equipment in that building. So I'm going to claim year one, the assessed value that cal that's generated for that manufacturing equipment. Couple years later, I decide to add on to that existing building and I'm gonna add another 20,000 square feet of space or whatever and the assessor raises my assessment so now in year three I'm claiming a deduction for the manufacturing equipment and in year one I'm claiming a deduction on the building addition that I put on so you could have layers of year one year three and whatever and they each independently go down that 10-year schedule until they drop off and so yes that that total deduction claim could be a cumulative total of the different layers that are happening at that business. Okay. Does that answer your question? So the total deduction claim is when it will show up on their tax bill? The total deduction would appear, yeah, the total deduction um, would appear on their tax bill. Let's say they've got 150000 gross assessed value right. and a $25,000 deduction. They would see that $25,000 deduction from this form on their tax bill. But and the accumulative. It, yeah, no. yeah, it would be the total. Not just year one or year three. It would be the, the total okay. for that facility that they're claiming on this form. Okay. Yeah. So that was a good question. Thank you. On page two, for the back side of the EZ2, is where the county auditor processes the form. Uh, the county auditor is supposed to make this determination by August 15th. And so if the taxpayer claimed a $25,000 deduction on the front, the auditor would determine that yes, that $25,000 deduction is the true and correct deduction that's going to be applied for this taxpayer. Or perhaps the auditor changes it for whatever reason. And then there's a box 
where the auditor would explain that change. And again, that would be the accumulative deduction. Yes, yes. The, because the tax bill is going to be for a parcel number on a property, and, um, and it's going to tie to a tax bill. And so, now, if they've got a personal property assessment and they've got a real property assessment, that won't be consolidated on a tax bill, but yet this form is going to cover both personal property deductions and real property deductions. So I'm assuming that the auditor would apply it towards one or the other, and the auditor would have that discretionary power. Because the auditor will not break this deduction down from this form based on, well, it's applicable to the personal property, part of it's applicable to personal property, and part of it's applicable to real property. I'm assuming the auditor would um, apply it in total to one of the parcel numbers attributable to this business. Now everything is local control. This is a local deduction. The county auditor has the statutory authority to regulate this deduction. So the auditor has the final say so in how this deduction is applied to the parcel numbers on the tax bills and things like that. Inside the packet, this file is the different enterprise zone forms. Um, there is a cover letter and then the workshop that was scheduled last week that we had to cancel due to the weather. Important names and addresses for filings for this year. It's on the bright orange sheet. It has the assessor's name, the auditor. We have a new auditor, Joey Winsky. It has contact information for uh, City Hall for the City Planner and the LaPorte Urban Enterprise Association and the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. These are the filing dates. And this year it's April 15th. Last year I think it was April 17th because of a holiday that's celebrated in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, this year they're not, April 15th doesn't fall on that, or the filing doesn't fall on that holiday. Um, easy to deadline is May 15th. In years past, the auditor used to allow appeals if you file date. Um, I don't know if they're doing that anymore. They used to allow an extension if you were going to file late. And again, that's up to the discretion of the auditor. Um, your enterprise zone business registration form, as we call it in EZBR, has to be postmarked no later than June 1st, and that is sent to the Indiana Economic Development Corporation with your registration fee, and then the EZBR extension form. If you get an extension, the EZBR is due July 15th. This is contact information we would like to have in our office. The first form is the IT40 QEC that goes to zone employees. And it's a certificate that they would fi file with their state tax return that would get them a tax deduction of up to $7,500. The easy two, which we just talked about, is the investment deduction for real or personal property. The Schedule LIC is the loan interest credit. <coughs> if you make a loan to an individual or a business within the Enterprise Zone, you may be able to get that qualified and take a tax deduction on the interest that you earn off of that loan. Um, a lot of banks use this. Okay. The Schedule EZ involves the employment expense credit. And that would be filed with the company state income tax return. And I believe the base year is 2002. That is when 
the Enterprise Zone started here in Laporte. And then we have the Enterprise Zone Business Registration Form, which is an easy BR. This is the form you fill out. Um, it has general information on top and then your tax savings summary under part two. Part three is the registration fee. Um, number 19, line 19 on this form is the financial compliance to the local urban enterprise association. Line 20, A and B is where you show, you have to show as a company a uh, capital investment where you take your tax savings and apply it back into the company. And here you would show whether you did it as a building renovation or new equipment. And then sign it. The original goes to the Indiana Economic Development Corporation and the local, the LaPorte Urban Enterprise Association gets a copy. And there are also instructions. And then the last form is an extension for the Enterprise Zone Business Registration Form. We also have a map. And that's about it. Do you want to talk about TIF? Sure. The, when Mr. McKinney was talking about the um, real and personal property tax deduction, the real property tax deduction is only allowable in a TIF district if the person desiring the deduction applies to the city council and gets approval from the city council. So that's the important thing regarding TIF and the Enterprise Zone investment deduction. Right now, currently, we only have one property owner, real property tax deduction in our TIFs. But we certainly um, have the process in place to go before the council. You would see myself. Um, and we walk you through the process to put you on the council agenda to make that request. And that's only for real property, not personal property. Just for real property. And the city has four TIFs, so if anybody has any questions, we have the maps here, but you can just call my office, 362-8260, ask for Mary Jane, and I can tell you if you're in a TIF or not. We talked about the Enterprise Zone business registration form and filing dates. Uh, Mary Jane has information about business grants that are available. The Enterprise Zone Board has um, created two business grant programs. The first one is called the Business Grant. Um, it is a dollar for dollar match up to $10,000 or a total of $20,000 for a total project cost. The projects that are eligible are exterior projects, they could be windows, um, tuck pointing, painting, um, anything, landscaping, parking lots, signage, things like that. Um, the board has indicated that it might have some interest in doing interior work, but at this point um, that would be decided on an individual basis. Those applications are available online at cityoflaporte.com. Um, be sure you do City of LaPorte, Indiana, because you will end up at City of LaPorte, Texas. Uh, once you get to City of LaPorte, Indiana, you click under Select Business, then Select Enterprise Zone, and then at the bottom of the page, Select More Information, and the grant applications are available there. The second grant is a new grant to 2013 this year. It is the Retail and Restaurant Grant, and it provides um, a grant not to exceed $5,000, to pay the uh, lease of a new or expanding business in the Enterprise Zone. The business owner must pay the security deposit in the first two months rent and then the Enterprise Zone will um, pay up to $5,000 in, in rent. And again, that application is online as well at the, as this, at the same site. Applications are accepted the third of each month and then the Enterprise Zone Board can it goes to the committee to be reviewed, um, and then it goes to the Enterprise Zone Board on the third Thursday of every month, so an answer would be available approximately on the third of, or sooner of the next month. 